HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Hey, and welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zekwa. Hope you all are enjoying the Sabbath day. We're happy to be with you all today and have this opportunity to continue building in the faith of Yahweh Christ. Today, we want to build on understanding for sisters becoming virtuous women and building believers in general. Touching on the church in the church setting for understanding why a woman ought to practice silence in the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34, please. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. A woman's silence in the church is to keep the commandments of being under obedience according to the law. So in light of this, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11, please. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. The church setting forces the woman to operate as Allah Hayim ordained, having to restrain their tongue, whether or not she practices these principles at home. First Timothy 2 and 12, please. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to assort authority over the man but to be in silence. The reason a woman is not suffered to teach in the church setting is as follows. 1 Timothy 2 and 13 and 14, please. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Since Adam was first formed and was not deceived, the woman ought not to usurp authority over the man, nor to teach in the church. Um... I wanted to just shed some light on 1 Timothy 2 and 14. When sure. it says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The reason they spoke about that is because the woman is easier to be taken by the devil than a man. So the last thing you need is a woman that's over the church and teaching in the church and to be overtaken by an emotion or whatever the case is, where she starts speaking according to her own understanding or her own will or her own passions and leading people astray. So just like you see when Eve, like she knew what Allah had commanded her to do. And we can use that as a teacher. Say Allah told you to do something, okay? You hold fast to it for a while. Then when the devil came, she literally forsaked everything that Allah had told her and followed after the devil. So women are very easily prone to follow the devil and to do what he wills for them. And that's why women aren't permitted to teach. Thank you. You're welcome. A woman seeking to learn has guidance on how to go about doing so. First Corinthians 14 and 35, please. Um, first Corinthians 14 and 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So women, ask your husbands at home if you have questions for your growth. Women with unbelieving men, ask the ministers of the faith in Yache your questions outside of the church setting as believing women like Magdonia did in the Acts of Thomas. With so respect to the man in your home, whether father or husband, humbly ask him for permission to do so. And if he's not willing, let no one withhold you from your salvation to seek guidance as you need in the faith. Women like Magdonia 
and tortilla did not let anyone deter them from going to get edification from the apostle. For an example of a believing woman whose head of household may be in unbelief, but the woman still sought out their own salvation in humility. You can read about the experiences in Acts of Thomas, chapter 82 to chapter 178. Now, continuing edification for a virtuous woman. Let's touch on showing love. First Clement, chapter 21, verse 7, please. Let them show their love, not in factitious preferences, but without partiality towards all them that fear Allah in holiness. So avoid cliques or showing preference for certain people above others in the faith. Amongst believers, be impartial, showing love to all who fear Ahaya, Alahayim. This will help operate in the Holy Spirit's wisdom that's from above. Can you read James chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, please? But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Notice, the first thing about wisdom from the Holy Spirit is purity. To help reiterate the importance of learning to keep the commandments and the fruits of the Spirit. Continue, please. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. All traits of a virtuous woman for your reference of what to work on and comfort to know is how the Holy Spirit herself is. In continuing, Let's touch on love in general. The Epistle of Polycarp to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6, please. Whenever you're ready. Um, I don't know if everybody understands what easy to be entreated means. Let's slide back. Uh, it's G2138. It says, good for persuasion, that is, compliant, easy to be entreated. She trusts her husband, so it isn't a contentious discussion when building on things, when making decisions as a family. And it makes sense because <laughs> we look at when Abraham went to Sarah about taking Isaac, sending Isaac off to, to learn. It wasn't a hard discussion. All right. When Rachel and Leah grew, when Jacob talked to them about leaving the land that they come from, leaving their father's, leaving house, father's house, it wasn't a hard discussion. <laughs> right. They were in agreement. So that's a great one to catch there. Praise I have for that. It takes being in agreement with your husband and trusting in Allah to guide your husband to be easy to be entreated, to be easy to convince, and to easily cooperate with your spouse. Anything else you had on that? Mm -mm. All right. Praise Allah for that. Mm -hmm. That's important. Do you want me to read the Epistle of Polycarp? Yeah, we're jumping into touching on love in general now. Please. Uh, the Epistle of Polycarp to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6. And teach ourselves first to walk according to the commandments of the Lord, and then your wives to walk likewise according to the faith that is given to them, in charity and in purity, loving their own husbands with all sincerity, and all others alike with all temperance, and to bring up their children in the instruction and fear of the Lord. Your faith is shown in these things, so work in these labors to build in the faith given to you. Build in your charity, in purity, in keeping the commandments, your charity in being hospitable, being easy to be entreated, 
being long suffering. You can get the scriptures on charity in First Corinthians chapter 13, about verse three to six. Um, build your faith in loving your own husband with all sincerity. It's interesting how these scriptures bring in back the things that we touched on earlier and how it has to be sincere. It has to be truly sincere for Allah. I am. It can't just be in word, but your spirit, your soul has to be in agreement with this to sincerely do this. Judged by sunlight. So it has to be pure, it has to be clean, it has to be single, can't be double minded. Tested as genuine. I tell you these things are going to come back up. Tested as genuine. Like you have to be tested before Allah I am as genuine and pure. It says loving their own husband with all sincerity. There's no way that you can love your husband without being sincere, without being truly genuine. And that's real love. All right. In the same way, we have to love Ahaya with all our heart, with all our mind, and all our soul, and all our strength. And you have to love all others alike with all temperance. Right, without impartiality. Right. You have to be genuine and temperate toward all, regardless of where they're at in their walk. Treat them with love and respect. Being impartial whether they treat you well or not. Though your relationships are not the same with each and every person, that respect for each person has to be there. And to bring up your children in instruction and fear of the Lord. We're not saying put yourself in harsh environments. We're saying just to have that respect for people internally. Right. And and to speak to people nicely and kindly and gently and to do good works unto people, even though they may treat you bad. Right. For that admonition of not putting yourself in bad situations for the sake of a person, you have Judith. She was seeking to save her people, but she wouldn't eat things sacrificed to idols. And she humbly requested to be excused. She said, I'm a religious person. I can't do that. So in meekness, do everything you have to to protect yourself, knowing yourself and what you can and can't handle. All right. Now, Touching for aged women. For aged women, walking in righteousness sets an example for younger women as well to learn to behave in a righteous manner of life so that the word of Allah is not blasphemed. Leave and teach the things you have learned that's right, not the wrong things, weighing all your thoughts and actions in the sight of Allah. Can you read? Titus chapter 2, verse 3, please. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness. Points of behavior that are becoming of holiness are as follows. Chapter 2, verse 1 of Titus, please. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. Age women need to be walking in these behaviors as well, as these are behaviors becoming of holiness. So you have this also for reference. Get the definitions of these words, understand them to help in your religious reasoning and guiding of where and who you need to be. And you also need to do these things as well. Titus chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, please. Not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, 
to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Let the word of Allah be not blasphemed. Now, it's interesting. Peter talked about women who let their chase conversation win people over, right? The older women, they are doing these things. They're being sober, loving their husbands, loving their children, discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. They're walking in it and teaching the younger women by their actions. And when women are having conversations amongst each other in the proper setting outside of church, those are the things they exhort the younger women onto. Everybody using their tongue for good, as we speak about words, the power they have, encouraging sisters to the right direction. And when the women, whether older or younger, when they walk in the righteous ordinance of the law through Paul, it gives none occasion for the adversary to speak reproachfully as well. And that will be proven your affection for Allah by doing what's right and the devil can't speak against you. And for the younger woman now who may not be married, the admonitions Paul gives helps keep you from reproach of the devil. First Timothy 5 and 14, please. I will therefore that the younger women marry bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Interesting. You go do these things, you're doing what Allah Hayyam created you for. <laughs> right. The devil can't speak against you because you're not self-willed. You're here in this world to fulfill Allah Hayyam's purpose. Single-minded. It's interesting. That's not a worldly woman. It's not a moderate woman. No. Modern, excuse me. It's not a modern. Yeah. Modern I know what you woman. meant. I know you meant modern, but right. <laughs> uh, a good wife guiding her house in righteousness is a beautiful thing in the sight of Allah. Now we're transitioning a bit into raising your children in instruction and fear of the Lord. Sirach chapter 26, verse 16, please. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So you have the light shining on you to make you perfect, that no impurity be found in you. And you become that light. In your light, you shine onto your children. And it beautifies the whole place, the whole house. Continuing in Proverbs 31 and 27, please. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. So you have a good mind towards your household, a good mind towards your children, your, your husband as well, of course. And you're not idle. You're seeing things that your family needs. You're working to make the changes. You're working to build your children up in the right way. You're not slacking, just letting it go. And then your children develop bad habits that will lead them in the wrong direction. As this is a virtuous woman, the father sitting on the throne, the Holy Spirit is in creation. She's not idle. <laughs> She's everywhere, taking care of business, making sure her household is in order. So you can know the spiritual aspect of what you're embarking on in doing these things. Proverbs 14 and 1, please. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plugged it down with her hands. You know, now, a woman that understands Allah Hayyam's will, understands who the Holy Spirit is and who she's, representing in the world by doing what's right, she's going to build her household up with words of encouragement, speaking life, speaking health into her family. But the foolish woman 
as we touched on earlier, she's clamorous and knows nothing. She doesn't understand what this calling is and what she was put into this world to do. She's going to pluck her house down. She's going to speak ill. She's not going to guard her emotions. No. She's going to be given over to anger. She's going to be negative. Not encouraging her household, helping them get better. Right. So, this brings to mind the subject of having kids. Can you read Genesis 2 and 18, please? And the higher Allah said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. She was not only given to him for his mental and physical health to flourish. Also, can you read Enoch chapter 15, verse 5, please? Therefore have I given them wives also, that they might impregnate them and beget children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. Men were also given wives to help them beget children by them, so that they would lack nothing in the earth. Now, can you read Jasher chapter 1, verse 6, please? And Elohim blessed them and called their names Adam and Eve in the day that he created them. And Ahaya Elohim said, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. This law by the word of Ahaya is for all married couples to perform. But the sons of men sinned in their desire to sleep with their wives, but not wanting the responsibility of children for their desire's sake, to keep their wives looking the same. Can you read Joshua 2 and 19, please? For in those days the son of men began to trespass against Elohim, and to transgress the commandments which he had commanded to Adam, to be fruitful and multiply in the earth. And some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink the drought that would render them barren. This is birth control and plan B, in layman's terms. Continue, please. In order that they might retain their figures and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fade. These men didn't love their wives in spirit and truth, but evidence of their desire for them was based upon their beauty of appearance and figures. Hence, they didn't desire to actually have a family with them, preferring just to enjoy their desire to sleep with them. That reminds me of um, Magdonia. Yes. Her husband was for filthiness. Right. Continue. And that's a way that you can sin within a marriage. Now we know. <laughs> now we know. It isn't right with Allah. I am. For clarity on the use of female contraceptives and male contraceptives, Anyone who is against the command to be fruitful and multiply through bearing children in marriage by getting on any birth control, sterilization, or use of plan B is in trespass against Allah who commanded Adam to be fruitful and multiply. Also, it's considered filthy intercourse for spouses to sleep together without the desire to have children. Now, in the case of believers who are married to unbelievers that are pleased to dwell with them, which means they respect your beliefs, way of living, and do not compromise your walk, though they do not believe or practice the same things. If the unbelieving spouse does not desire children, but is pleased to dwell with you, in order to avoid fornication, let the believer use protection if the unbelieving spouse desires or requests it out of respect for them and to keep oneself from fornication. Now, for believers who are married to believers, both would desire children to be fruitful and multiply as commanded and would not have use for protection or contraceptives as they trust in Allah that he will give them seed according to his will and provide all things necessary for raising up his children given in their care. Now, for men who may desire to become eunuchs by removing the ability to produce sperm by surgical operations like vasectomy, it inhibits them from one, fulfilling the law to be fruitful and multiply, and two, 
from having the ability to help the woman fulfill the law so that she may be saved by childbearing, as Paul attested in 1 Timothy 2 and 15. If a man becomes a eunuch, he cannot take a wife or sleep with any woman, but has to be holy, given unto the Lord to keep himself pure in mind and body. Continue. Uh, and when the sons of men called some of their wives to drink, Zilla drank with them. And the childbearing women appeared abominable in the sight of their husbands as widows. While if their husbands lived for the barren ones only, they were attached. These worldly men hated their own flesh that begot their children. Much like today. When worldly men do not love their wives, being bitter against them after they have lost their youthful beauty by begetting children for them, because the worldly man didn't truly love the woman in the first place, being more into her beauty of appearance than loving the actual soul he was united with. Women, hopefully you can see the importance of guarding your chastity. For those sisters who are now working to preserve themselves, knowing their bodies are not their own, having been brought with a price by the blood of Christ, because there are men who, though they may want to marry you, they don't truly love you. And some women learn these things the hard way after they have lost their beauty through going through the agonies of bearing children and the work of raising them for the worldly man. He shows his true colors because he really was in it for his lust and her beauty rather than taking the time to get to know her soul and become one with her. In spirit, as a believing man, is to do from the edification we learned in the lesson called Man, His Wife, and Christ. You can refer back to that for edification as well. So sisters, take your time. Focus on your study, your good works and the fruits, and your job and or children, if you have them, until I hire, give you unto a man of understanding according to his will, or he converts your husband to become a man of understanding. If you're unmarried, focus on your study, your good fruits, your job and your children, until Ahaya gives you to a man of understanding so you don't fall into a relationship with a worldly man who won't take the time to build a real connection with you in spirit. All right. Now, touching on abortion. We know the birth control and plan B is a trespass against Allah Hayam because he commanded to be fruitful and multiply. So women, don't take anything that stops your body from doing what Allah created it to do. In the last lesson, we touched on the importance of keeping your virginity. Unfortunately, the world teaches the young women to defile their virginity, and sadly, worldly parents, when they find out their child's virginity is defiled, they don't teach them to go in the right way to stop it, but put them on birth control usually so that they can continue sleeping around, which causes their daughters to add sin unto sin by trespassing against Allah to render their bodies barren and provide an avenue to continue in fornication without incurring the responsibility of children. So they're promoting it. Yeah. Can you read Barnabas chapter 19, verse 5, please? Thou shalt not murder a child by abortion. Nor again shalt thou kill it when it is born. So, for our understanding, abortion is murder according to the law. Once you're pregnant, there's no stopping that process to avoid murder. Okay? There are punishments in the place of torments for the transgression of ridding of one's child. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 8, please? And nearby this flame shall be a pit, great and very deep, and into it floweth from above all manner of torment, foulness, and issue. And women are swallowed up therein, 
up to their necks and tormented with great pain. These are they that have caused their children to be born untimely and have corrupted the work of Allah that created them. He gave men wives to impregnate them to be fruitful and multiply. This is corrupted by abortion and conceiving children out of wedlock. Can you continue reading, please? Over against them shall be another place where sit their children, both alive, and they cry unto Allah And flashes of lightning go forth from those children and pierce the eyes of them for fornication's sake have caused their destruction. So you see from these punishments here, they were doing it for fornication. They said for fornication's sake, they caused their destruction. So continue reading, please. <laughs> Other men and women shall stand above them naked, and their children stand over against them in the place of delight, and sigh and cry unto Allah because of their parents, saying, these are they that have despised and cursed and transgressed thy commandments and delivered us unto death. They have cursed the angel that formed us and have hanged us up and withheld from us the light which thou hast given unto all creatures. And the milk of their mothers flowing from their breasts shall congeal and from it shall come forth beasts devouring flesh, which shall come forth and turn and torment them forever with their husbands because they forsook the commandments of Allah and slew their children. So these are the married ones. Right. So if y'all have children and y'all are married and y'all kill the baby, have an abortion, that's a place for you. And if you're single and you kill the baby to continue in fornication, there's a place for you. Right. As for their children, they shall be delivered unto the angel, Timlachos, and caretaken angel. And they that slew them shall be tormented eternally, for Allah will it so. Well, as we discussed in the last lesson, we all come from the world and the lust of it. We can bring forth fruit right of repentance. May Allah I am accept our penitence and we perform his will unto the end, knowing the mercy he's given us for what we may have done in the past. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 26, please? Chapter 1, verse 26, sorry. Mm -hmm. And hard by that place I saw another straight place wherein the discharge and the stench of them that were in torment ran down. And there was as it were a lake there. And there sat women up to their necks in that liquor. And over against them many children which were born out of due time sat crying. And from them went forth rays of fire and smote the women in the eyes. And these were they that conceived out of wedlock and caused abortion. So you don't want to have children outside of your marriage. Well, they were sleeping around with someone else and got pregnant and when they got an abortion. Yeah. That's not becoming a virtuous woman. So you have that to know that's not what to do. If you happen to have made some decisions in the past that led to you having children now in a manner that wasn't good, remember, the accidents that befall us are good. Know that nothing happens without Allah. Can you read Barnabas 19 and 6, please? The accidents that befall thee, thou shalt receive as good, knowing that nothing is done without Allah. So that child Allah gave you, Allah Hayim gave it to you. Okay. Just because you have kids from prior relationships doesn't mean you cannot join the family of Abraham in faith because Hadura, the Shemite woman, had a Persian daughter in a prior marriage and was a single mother after that husband died. But she was a virtuous woman 
And Asher married her after because she was a woman of sense. And her daughter, Sarak, became his daughter through marriage. And she was upright in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. So keep working on your virtue, single mothers, because a good woman is given to them that fear Ahaya. Can you read Sirach 26 and 3, please? A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. There is a man who is a true son of the Most High. He will take on the role as your husband and the blessing of being your children's father through marriage, just as Asher was blessed with a child through marriage. Can you read Sirach chapter 4, verse 10, please? Be as a father unto the fatherless, and instead of a husband unto their mother, so shalt thou be as the son of the Most High, and he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth. Understand that Yahweh is Lord and Master, and men are servants, so women and children belong to him by law. Can you read Exodus 21 and 4, please? If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. So if a man wasn't a believer and departed, Yahweh keeps the woman and children as they are his, to give to whom he wills as master of all in this world. So just put the work into growth, sisters, and Yahweh will give you to the man you are meant to be with when he knows your heart is ready and the man is ready as well. Let patience have a perfect work. Ahaya will give you a man that will love you from the soul, not being just into your looks, and will love you all's children and will desire more children with you in righteousness to continue his name. Can you read Sirach 40 and 19, please? Children, in the building of a city continue a man's name, but a blameless wife is counted above them both. Be blameless and work to become virtuous that you may rejoice in your husband, bringing him peace as his safe haven. Now let's touch on the blessing of getting married and having children together so that the enemy cannot speak reproachfully. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, please. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception, and sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. The law of Allah is for the salvation of the woman. 1 Timothy 2 and 15, please. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith, in charity, in holiness, with sobriety. You have to have kids naturally for your salvation, and you have to continue in faith, charity, and holiness with sobriety to retain the salvation you earned by bearing the children naturally. You earn salvation in natural childbearing for this reason. Apocalypse of Moses, chapter 25, please. And the Lord turned to me and said, Since thou hast hearkened to the serpent and turned a deaf ear to my commandment, thou shalt be in the throes of travail and intolerable agonies. Thou shalt bear children in much trembling, and in one hour thou shalt come to the birth and lose thy life from thy sore trouble and anguish. But thou shalt confess and say, Lord, Lord, save me, and I will turn no more to sin of the flesh. And on this account, from thy own words, I will judge thee by reason of the enmity which the enemy has planted in thee. This is why you have to go through that natural birth and process. There's something spiritually that's transpiring in this experience as well, as we just read. The oath not to turn any more to the sin of the flesh is why you have to continue in faith, charity, and holiness with sobriety to perform the oath unto the end and be saved. The war we are in today does not agree with these things that are really good. So the virtuous woman who aligns her heart with these things are not easy to find. Can you read Proverbs 31 and 10, please? Yeah, they'll rather cut you up so that you don't go through what Elohim intended it to be. Yeah. Cut you and numb you so you right. don't 
So you can't get your oath. <laughs> so you right. can't fulfill what he commanded. He literally commanded to go through that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Hard to find highly valuable, just like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> sure. The virtuous woman is like the Holy Spirit in this world, <laughs> clothed in the strength of her fruits. Proverbs 31 and 25, please. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. So you know now, she talks in the right season and time, not in her feelings without discretion so as to offend. Continue, please. And her tongue is the law of kindness. Whatever she speaks will be kind, and she is able to bridle her tongue so as not to offend with a word. Continue, please. Her Proverbs children, 31 and 28, my bad. You are. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he prays of her. Look at that environment where she's, her words, she's so healthy to the family. Everybody's happy to be around her and praising her. Continue, please. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that fear for higher, she shall be praised. You will be called blessed by your kids, if and when you have them. Your husband also, and he will praise you along with others. Continue, please. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. And thus it shall be. Allah will give every person the fruit of their hands. And your works, when you get interesting, her works shall praise her in the gates. When you enter into heaven, the spirits that you're working in, they're going to speak for you. They're going to be on your behalf. All right. I know that was a long one. Thank you all for your patience. To summarize it all, <laughs> be pure, thinking good things of the law, and do good, keeping the commandments. Get good guidance of instruction to be silent and loving, quiet spirited, and meek, having control of your emotions. And be loving as women of old time who trusted in Allah Hayyam, had done being in subject to their own husbands with good works, calling them Lord. Remember your silence helps you show moderation in your tongue and keeping silent in your trials with purity of your heart, thinking upon what's lawful and really good will help you understand the will of Allah Hayyam to do and say what's right. If it's an occasion to do good by your graceful words, after having controlled yourself and slowed down so as not to be eager to corrupt your doings or speak rashly with vain words. Keep working to perfect your ways of uprightness to honor your husband all the days, doing him good, not permitting yourself to speak any harsh word to him, being gentle, peaceable, easy to talk to, and kind, meek, and comforting when you talk. While upright and honorable in how you carry yourself and handle things, Ensuring it's good that you're doing according to the commandments. Your honor for your husband counts you as wise in the sight of Allah Hayyam, though the world would not agree with this as a really good work. But now you know it's a really good work because you know Allah Hayyam is testing you and he's watching you to see if you're going to be that help me he created you to be. And you're embarking on the single mind focus on doing what's right in the sight of Allah Hayyam. Your husband will trust in you and appreciate you more than anything in the world for the comfort you bring to him, rejoicing in you and praising you, as well as your kids will speak well of you 
and Allah and will reward you for the fruits of your labor to be an example of his Holy Spirit in this world, being a glory and crown to your husband as the Holy Spirit is the brightness of the Father. Also, be shamefaced and fruitful and faithful with a continent mind, being graceful, using discretion in your manner of living and talking. In your learning process, don't be ashamed to confess your faults, to find grace and glorify Yachi as you're learning. Don't be ashamed to seek understanding as to how you can do better in the things you struggle with as well in loneliness of heart. Don't be a respecter of persons trying to do well to please a man, but do well because it's your desire to do it for Allah Hayyam from your heart. That you may truly please Allah Hayyam and your head of household with your whole heart in all sincerity. Also, don't be a respecter of persons to let anyone cause you to fall trying to please them or be liked by them. Keep in mind to be in subjection to your own husband in everything, as you would unto the Lord. Engage your growth in how well you are able to be subjection unto your husband, as the better you get at doing that, the more you're increasing in the Lord. With that, hope this was helpful. Anything else, Brother Zachwa? No, I think we covered everything. That was good. Yes, we did. <laughs> Praise, Praise Allah. Allah. Allah, Allah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you all. And we look forward to spending time with you all again. And just any prayer, um, anything we need to discuss, just reach out to us via email. And we look forward to hearing from you. Ahaya be with you all and peace be with you all. Chalam. Chalam, everybody. Peace. HRC, 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 Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.